Hey y'all, let's talk about operator overloading in c -sharp. It's a fairly overlooked uh, feature of the language that is in fact useful in some scenarios, but you might not be sure when to use them and how to work with them efficiently, as well as the fact that they have some quirks and gotchas to themselves as well. So before we dwell into when to use them and how to use them, let's see what operators can we overload and which can we not, and if there are some quirks to them as well. So as you can see, uh, the operators that we can overload, uh, the math uh, operators, the plus, the minus, the multiply, uh, modulo, division, uh, some binary operators, these are pretty self-explanatory. Uh, you can overload them. There are some overloading operators that you can only overload in pairs. So if you compare for equality, you also have to have the negation of it implemented as well. Same for greater and less than and greater or equal and less or equal as well. And there are also assignment operators that you can overload. There's the explicit one and the implicit one, but they are mutually exclusive. So if you choose to overload one of them, you cannot overload the other one. So for the explicit operator, you can only perform the explicit assignment, uh, which is shown here in the syntax. And we'll talk about uh, what are the differences between them uh, in a second. But for the implicit one, you can uh, perform the implicit assignment as shown here, but you can also perform the explicit one. So you might, th you might think that the implicit operator is better, but they are different in the intent of the programmer. So let's talk about why should you overload one of those. So the explicit operator allows you only to use the cast syntax uh, for your assignment. And it basically tells the developer that there may be some loss of information here. So if you decide to cast some pre higher precision type to some lower precision type, you should use explicit casting because it tells the developer that, hey, there might be something lost here. This is something that is potentially dangerous and might throw an exception. So the example of something like this could be casting a double to an int because it may result in some data loss. So as you uh, see here, if we have some flotation point in your float type uh, or in your double type, when casting to an int, this will be lost. And uh, even though it won't throw an exception, you will lose some data. It can be fine in scenarios where the type can be casted one to one to the type you want, but it indicates the intent of uh, some problems that may arise from your conversion. Explicit conversion has to be specified anyway. It does not mean that there might be some exception of some operator missing. It is there, but it just may result in some improper casting, yeah? So now let's go into the implicit cast, which allows you to cast explicitly as well, but it allows you to also just specify the type that you want and it will just magically uh, create the new value with the new variable type that you decided on. Uh, so this conversion may be like casting an int to double. Int will always map to double without any information loss. Uh, it also goes for derived types that will be cast to base type. So if you have like a class of student that implements a person type, if you cast the student to person, you know that it will work and there will be no problems with this cast, so it can be casted implicitly. So since we know what is the explicit in the implicit cast, why cannot they be implemented together? Well, because if we perform the explicit cast, we won't know which operator overload to use actually. So it's just uh, there, so we don't have any confusion. The implicit cast allows you to cast explicitly as well. And that's it. Now that we learned about implicit versus explicit conversion, we may ask ourselves when we want to map between the DTO object and a domain model object, which conversion should we use? Should it be explicit or implicit? Well, there are actually two other ways to do that. There's the user defined conversion and conver conversion with helper class, which basically means something like auto mapper or, you know, helper class that just allows us to map. Well, I think that the conversion operators should be reserved for some more uh, advanced scenarios than that. I think that converting between the DTO and the domain model is not the use case for equals uh, operator. But just for the sake of argument, 
let's just see how it works in action. So we have our person and our person DTO. We create the DTO here and we map it to our model version in two ways. And let's see how it works. So here we have the operator overloaded in our person DTO. We accept the DTO and uh, we create from that the domain model version. Uh, this is something that is simple, but yet I think that it shouldn't be used and some static class with some static method mapping uh, this, uh, those types uh, would be much better. But I just wanted to showcase how it works, how, uh, how the syntax behaves. Uh, and the notable thing here is that person DTO has to be either accepted or return type uh, you cannot have uh, some operator for some two different types in your class. It has to be connected with the class you're actually implementing. And also you cannot accept the object as the uh, type uh, that is going into your operator. And I think that those are the two main quirks about the operator overloading. So now let's move on to operators which we cannot overload, which is the is keyword, the as keyword, which are fairly new in C-sharp, new, uh, the assignment, uh, the dot to assign to just get the property value of some type, ternary operator, the type of and size of, and why cannot they be overloaded? Well, they would just have too much freedom. So there are some expectations from the developer that when he wants to get the type of, he will receive the type and not some magic code that will, I don't know, do something that you think that is better in this case, but these commands are so basic in their requirements that we shouldn't be able to overload them. But is is a notable exemption of that because it basically behaves like an equal double equals uh, operator. That should allow us to compare the same, but it was created with this not overloading in mind. So we sometimes just want to check if something is null and if a developer decides to overload that check, we wouldn't be able to be 100% sure that the class that we've checked for is actually null. So is is a way to deal with that. There are some other quirks to the is keyword as well, but for the purposes of overloading uh, operators, this is the main thing. Is cannot be overloaded and therefore it is safer to check with is for nulls and some other pattern matching scenarios. So now let's answer the question on when is overloading your operators actually useful? So I have two qu answers to that question. And the first one is in the domain scenario, if you are working with some primitives and you are refactoring, refactoring them to some domain types, like for example, in our book scenario, our title will not be a string, but in fact, it will be a book title type, uh, which is a class that holds the title, but it also has some properties on it, which can give us some information like the part of the sub, uh, subtitle of the uh, actual book title. If you're working with those uh, more advanced types, not the primitive string, uh, you may start to uh, want to have the uh, fluent syntax of your uh, plus and minus, or maybe you just want to have your uh, mappings or the castings from uh, just a simple string that if you have a method that accepts your title, so let's just call it uh, uh, get title here and you can you don't want to cast uh, to your book title your title every time you use it you may have your operator that explicitly cast the a string to your book title and therefore your code will be much more concise so let's see how our book title uh, code uh, looks like so as you can see it's already refactored here and we have two constructors, one accepts just the title, but one uh, accounts for the series name, the subtitle and part. So uh, it is in such uh, format. And we also have our operator that accepts a row title and just basically splits it, tries to match it to the uh, more advanced uh, scenario. But if it cannot do that, it will just uh, uh, convert it to a simple title. And as you can see, the book title operator uh, works here. We have our DTO that contains only the string, but it is in fact mapped to our book title because the implicit conversion works as shown here. We can also make it explicit 
and this will stop working here but we can just then do this and uh, here we have our cast so as you can see for scenarios where you want to extract uh, your domain knowledge from your primitives it may be useful to use them but there's also a one more thing that I wanted to mention about operators and that is when you're working with uh, handler results so for example if you have our uh, endpoint that uh, returns the OK result that is the I result type um, we may not be uh, okay with uh, returning always the results okay uh, we want to throw exceptions when we have no content or we have some bad request and if we are returning something we know that it is uh, okay result type so we can con uh, have a conversion from uh, for example the list of book DTOs to our results okay and then we could just return books and it would be converted explicitly to our OK. So this may be a little bit more advanced, but when you're uh, working with some return um, creation of type just to return some, from some method, you might start thinking about a overloading operator uh, of conversion to simplify your return statements. Yeah, I hope that was insightful enough uh, I didn't go into too much depth uh, when in regards to addition, multiplying, but those I think are self, uh, self explanatory. You just need to know the syntax and you can start working with them in your code. So, with that, I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.